Uh, what's better, the fine art world or Dungeons and Dragons? Um, how kind do you want me to be? <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Uh, I would say um, the fine art world has uh, a whole host of problems when it comes to uh, its barrier for entry and gatekeeping. Let's talk about gatekeeping for a second because I would think that like um, as a DM but player, a gatekeeper sounds pretty cool. Gatekeeper. Play the troll toll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are not allowed to show your work in my gallery. I, I th Get out! It's true, though. Oh my Lightning God. bolt. Your crew walks into a dirty inn. <laughs> there are creatures in every corner looking at you as you grab for your crotches and head over to the bar. You overhear a strange conversation about something new, something special. Something called Lucky Time Explosion. Wow. <laughs> Welcome back to Lucky Time Explosion, everybody. Your source for art news, art chatter, general nonsense, and interviews with interesting creative people. Today, I've brought on a special friend, TJ Bavallis. What's up, TJ? Hey. Wow. Yeah. We got a live studio audience today. There's well, like 70 people awesome. in here. I know, it's wild, man. You brought the whole crew. You yeah. run deep. I mean, you know. <laughs> He's a wizard. He's a wizard. They yeah. run deep. Yeah, yeah. we got They got the, big staff. Well, you always say never split the party. That's like really important. So, yeah. I mean, we, were, we knew we were going into an encounter, so we had to stay together. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I met you uh, originally a con artist when we were doing some like painting. And, yeah. Yeah, you were doing some like fine art thing. We did some cool. I saw a couple cool events with you at like Ludlow House. Yeah. Stuff like that. And then we, we started... We did the Soho House. Well, I guess yeah. it was Ludlow House at that time because they had changed. Uh, because well, they're, they're like under the umbrella of uh, Soho House. Because there was multiples of them. They have like 12 all over the they world. Have, they have 12 now? Yeah, they have them in like Jeez. Turkey. They've got them everywhere. My goodness. Uh, but then we started... Uh, I started going over to, for D&D. &D. Yeah. Thus the Wizard yes. hat. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I have a qu my first question for you is uh, what's better, the fine art world or Dungeons and Dragons? Um, how kind do you want me to be? <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Uh, I would say um, the fine art world has uh, a whole host of problems when it comes to uh, its barrier for entry and gatekeeping, uh -huh. whereas I feel like the TTRPG world, uh, tabletop role-playing game, has yeah. a lot less gatekeeping going yeah. on there, and I feel like it's definitely been made to be far more accessible uh -huh. for a lot more people. Um, I mean, let's face it, like... The art world can be very who you know, where you are. And, yeah, it really and, is. And, and then whereas, like, even if it's not D&D, &D, it could be literally any other TTV RPG. It's just uh, you, you gather a bunch of people around the table and, like, you don't need any, like, capital to buy a ticket. You don't need a bunch of art <laughs> uh, supplies. You I don't know, man. I spend a lot of money on dice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, that's the dice goblet in you. That's just, and like, the and thing, my like, custom-made uh, steel and bronze mini from yeah. Hero Forge. That also costs a little bit. Can you hyper-focus <laughs> on it like that? Yeah, I mean, like... And that's the other thing. When you have an intrinsic interest in wanting to do that, of course. Of right. course you're going to, like, you know, spend money on it. Where, but, like, I don't want to say, like, sometimes it feels work. But especially in the creative arts that become more... Um, uh, into the pop culture and like capitalist as far as like uh, like especially with art and, and how like the collectors and all this other stuff and and acting and everything is like they always say you got to put the work in you got to put the work you do in. you got to put it, the work in and uh, it's as a much long as game you do and, and it is a long game but it can also be very intimidating because there's like so many people out there that are like doing these crazy pieces and like yeah. making like hundreds of thousands of dollars off of them. Right. And you could just sit at your table and be like, hey, look, I, I spent the last, like, you know, 72 hours really, really hard working on this thing for you if you're, like, you know, the game master. Yeah. And your friends are like, okay, cool, we're going to focus and we're going to give you attention because they're already somewhat invested in you and they already have your trust and that's yeah. what that is. That's As a, a dungeon master. Trust. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Game master, dungeon master, depends on, like, you know, what game you're playing. Is but there a yeah. difference between a game master and a dungeon master? Game master is just, I believe, is just more a generic term. It's also kind of like the way the British people uh, often ah. say. British? Like, oh, the Brits? Yeah, the Brits. Game master. It's, it's just far more the like... The game master. Like, it's like the aluminum to our aluminum. Oh, um, man. That's know, why we fought the war, right? <laughs> no. No, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, but so we, so is it adamantium or admantanium? Uh, adamantium. Adamantium. That is adamantium. It's the third, yeah. and I was wrong. But wait, wait a minute. Son of a bitch. Uh, let's talk about gatekeeping for a second, because I would think that, like, um, as a DM but player, a gatekeeper sounds pretty cool. Gatekeeper. <laughs> yeah, no, like, yes. I'm the yes. gatekeeper. Play the troll toll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are not allowed to show your work in my gallery. I, I th Get out! It's true, though. Oh, my Lightning God. bolt. You can't, like, Lightning you can... Bolt. You Lightning can, bolt. 
<laughs> I got a fireball. Um, so like you, you can like, there are so many pickup games where you can just walk in to a game at like a game store or something and be like, hey, I'd like yeah. to do this. Can you commit to this schedule? And I said, yes, you can show up. I want to do this character. Okay, cool. This is what do the you, world is. So uh, for the audience listening at home, you have a um, televised, a broadcasted, a YouTubed yeah. uh, thing. Shit. It's called yeah, we Dice it on, of Ages. Yeah, so yeah. Dice of Ages. What is it called again? Dice, Dice of Ages. Dice of Ages. Dice of the Ages. Dice of the Ages. Yeah. Pretty, I mean, I can't believe that wasn't taken. Good job on that. I mean, we have no what idea how long we workshopped that name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so How's that been going? Tell, it's, it's been going good. I mean, like, we, well, most of it we do it for ourselves. And, yeah. and like, uh, actually, That's just like art, though. Sean here, one of our crew that came here mm -hmm. today that uh, uh, that convinced me, he goes like, dude, what you're making is awesome. I love, like, uh, the GM stuff, the world yeah. that you're building. This is, uh, this is IP. This is intellectual property. You should, like, you know, start streaming it or something like that. And I said, okay. And it was... It was a lot of work to like yeah. be doing that stuff. Like we, but now we're on like Facebook, Twitch, and everything. We did the set. We did the four K cameras. How often do you the play? Podcast microphones and uh, record. Well, so we actually have three campaigns set in the homebrew world that I built from scratch. World building, and, love and it. so like they all, all the parties actually play in the same world, but like yeah. they're different people, they're different groups of people that play at different times. Right. And so sometimes they, the, the actions of one campaign and one group and one party actually affects through ripples of the world. Some of the other, uh, yeah. going, is it like sliders? Ones. Uh, are you like, like going sliders. in and out of different adventures? Oh, you mean at the like, same time, like <laughs> different the show, dimension, like, different like quantum universes. leap. That I mean, was a great show. You know, I feel thing. like I, I, I should have. I mean, that's an older show. Kind of. I'm, I'm older, but like, I feel like I missed out on quantum leap and it's a show that I never jumped back to. But I think we all should maybe touch I, on Scott Bakula. Scott Bakula. <laughs> Scott Bakula is a legend. He is um, a legend. Scott Bakula. Scott but, Bakula. And uh, so huh. the the uh, the world itself is, is uh -huh. supposed to be split among it. Like we try to play. Like each group tries to play every other week. But yeah. you know, stuff happens. It's a lot like art too. Like you're pouring your heart and soul into this production and making this uh, amazing no world building. <laughs> and it's like you, you you throw it out there, and then some people are like, oh, cool. Click, yeah. click, click. Like, we, sure. I mean, we're on YouTube too, and like, you know, we're like fucking hyped if we get like eight minutes of watch hours. So, like, grabbing people's uh, attention is, is a hard thing to do. It is. Uh, and do you feel like there's any kind of like, I feel like there's a lot of connections between creative role playing games and yes. making art. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Definitely. It's actually one thing I wanted to touch on too, is yeah. because like, uh, there's definitely most of it we have to do for us. It has to be for us. Yeah, uh, they're, they're, that's because, the big one, right? And because, I mean, they keep coming back. The players keep coming back. They want to be that's there. Good. They're emotionally invested in their characters. They're emotionally invested in the world. And that took a while to get there. You often start with some stuff where you have to give them some sort of extrinsic value in order to want to be involved and, like, move throughout the world and interact mm. with the lore and interact with, like, NPCs, non-player characters, and all that other thing. And once they do that and you got them on a little bit of a line, then they kind of get take the momentum and they start driving mm. the train forward themselves, especially when they have... When you grab onto... That's one of the big things about GM is like grabbing onto what is the character that this player is playing, what actually motivates them, and you grab onto that and you're like, okay, I'm going to like give you a just kind of play on your backstory a little bit and give you something to be emotionally invested in to want to motivate you to move forward. And by when it starts to get to that momentum, DM gets to step back. So right. you can step back and the DM can step back and, and just be a referee would you and say everybody a DM, else drives the story. Would you say a DM is more analogous to like a gallerist or an art <laughs> agent? I would say there's definitely... Uh, <laughs> the player's the artist. What's the, what's the DM? I think it's more of like a, a manager, curator, but nicer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but nicer, <laughs> but nicer. nicer. Have you ever, because like you're, you should already be friends with these people. As right. you don't have, to be, have you ever created like a character like you specifically made really obnoxious, annoying to just like completely grind on everyone else that during is a, the whole adventure? Okay, so this is a really good question. Actually, I do want to answer it in depth a little bit because this is yes, you absolutely can make joke characters and you absolutely can do that, but you also have to manage expectations and find out what the setting. Do you is. have a favorite one that you've created that you you sometimes almost feel like you need to bring back? Oh yeah, I can't remember. His just name. to fuck with everybody uh, else. Yeah, so hold on. Let me finish the first question, and I'll get to the thing. But yes, you do that, um, but you also have like manage the setting, because if you're going to be in like a campaign that's like a year or two long, you don't want a, a year name. or two long? Yeah, we you played for two years, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, these campaigns can last for years. Like, yeah. that's, that came, like, like the just, adventure could last yeah, for years? Yeah, yeah, Isn't yeah, that yeah. great, people? Yeah, it's fucking, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> that's it's my favorite part about it. It's basically it. like you're doing collective storytelling, so yeah, you, are, right. you are creating an epic while you're playing. And it's, so, it's, so it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. It's such a great cooperative storytelling. Um, but like, so if you're in a setting that you're going to be playing for like two years, maybe you don't want your guy named Buttermilk Buzz 
Jabba's beard or, or like or, or something like that, that, that oh, their attack is like squeezing udders at you. That's probably not, you know, something that you so want. Your that's that's a joke that's going to get old awesome. real fast. Right, and right. also like, you know, not going to age well, hopefully. Yeah, so, well, milk doesn't age well. So yeah, yes. the <laughs> there's, the milk. there's the joke. Got okay, it. cool. So, so there we go. And we get that. And we can only say that joke so many times, yeah. especially on air. But like, but yeah, when you're doing like things like one shots, which are right. games that you just like play once. Yeah, you know, go ham. I had this one character who was like this surfer dude. Oh, fuck, I even wore sunscreen. A surfer dude in D on my face. Yeah, a surfer yeah. dude in D. &D. He was a surfer dude wow. bard, and That's he was awesome. like, he was like, yeah, bro. And we had like a turtle other part of our party, which is like yeah. a turtle person. And <laughs> so I absolutely did. Uh, uh, a thing where I was like, we were going down a snowy mountain and I like casted Blitter Blizzard with a di didgeridoo and I jumped on the back of the turtle and we were like, wow. Righteous! Wait, righteous. what did you do with it the didgeridoo? Yeah. You casted it with the didgeridoo? Yeah, so some <laughs> items in, in like fantasy TTRPGs have magic infused in them and you can like cast spells with them or they give you special No, wait a abilities. minute, is this real magic? Um, I mean, if ma it's real magic <laughs> so because you get to have amazing fun with your friends. So, so at I this think that's point, you're going down to Snow Hill, and yeah. what was casted out of the didgeridoo? Yes. Yeah, so you, so as a bard, you can play songs or oh, like right, right, right. Uh, use your charisma, a Riz, as the you know new generation. They do. Said. They call it Riz now. Yeah, they do call it Riz. People don't know that the charisma, the Riz, is short for charisma. A lot of people I, are like, oh, that's sad. That's neat. See, he didn't know either. Have you ever seen the movie Zero Charisma? No, What's I haven't seen that no. either. That I keep on weird. telling everybody how you guys play D and D, and I know about the weird indie D and D movie. Oh. Uh, no, it, it's called Zero Charisma. Um, if anybody has seen it, they'll know it's a very it's a hilarious movie. And anybody that likes Dungeons and Dragons would greatly. I mean, it's about Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. it's about someone who gets a little upset that his team is playing with somebody else. Yeah, and shit goes uh, down. Yeah, that's you know who another doesn't like D and D. Awesome. You know who does not like D and D? Um, like a suburban parents in the '90s huh. during the Satanic huh. Panic. Of course. Yeah. Mm. So I have to ask D TJ, since you're a D and D yep. expert, is D and T is it Satanic? Um, if you're actually talking about the actual <laughs> is it evil, literal, it depends on what you, well, you view on, satanic. <laughs> Will it warp satanism? my child's mind? It depends on your literal definition. If you're going uh -huh. with the literal definition of like what the satanic temple is, like right. what are their tenets? Is like logic and reason over you know the written word and everything, Correct. and make sure you care for people and like you know believe in science. And Imagine that care, and do what medicine and all this thing. I know. So it I mean, confusing. I kind sounds of evil as hell. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's all about <laughs> yeah, community, evil, baby, and not like you know just believing in numinous just because. Evil yeah. is like, love. Critical thinking is big in there, so yeah, well, of course. We were talking a little bit the other day, just in our own personal conversations, about how uh, you know reality is kind of like fracturing into many different, uh, like, it's like the metaverse. Yeah, it's, it's like, like the, the metaverse. metaverse. It's like it's like a multiverse in real life, where <clears throat> depending on who you are, like I'm asking you if it's satanic, and you're like, yeah, according to the tenets of the satanic temple, which yeah. is good, yeah. and we love it that. Is very good. I don't think that's what they mean. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, think well, they're thinking thing about the temple. They're thinking about like old world. Devil like Beelzebub yeah, down in sure, fire sure, and brimstone. Sure, there, yeah, but that's also like you know a big thing of ignorance too. I mean, how do you want how would, how much do you want to go by de deconstructing the Bible or a bunch of other organized religions? The Bible, the Bible. I read that book. But don't they say that hell is just one big ass party? Oh uh, well, what uh, the Pope said it doesn't well, even exist. Which hell are you referring to? Uh, I used so, to read a lot of Mad Magazine, and according to Mad Magazine, hell look fucking awesome yeah <laughs> well i mean so if you're like if you really want to go into all it, my friends are down there there's like you could go like the you know the nine circles of hell like you uh Dante's Dante. inferno and there's also the nine hells in actual like dungeons and dragons canonical like wizards of the coast does um, that mean that in your world lore. in your world and are there one nine hells um no like it, is there just in, one hell so because i created my world from scratch and obviously i took uh, inspiration from many 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 other things what did and, you like, steal from let me know um okay so uh, <laughs> you okay, can't continue, steal it I have a good question. I have a good question for sure, you. Sure, sure. I'll ask you now. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, um, okay, so, you know, Dungeon So Dragon you're in started. one of the nine hells. I'm in one of the nine oh, hells right now. Yeah. <laughs> this is hell. This yeah. is hell. This is oh, podcast that's hell. That's confirmed. No, yeah. like, as a dungeon master, game master, um, have you ever, like, just like, it was like, oh, shit, I want to get one of those old adve pre-written adventures from oh. the 80s. I just want to fucking roll with it. For or maybe collector's even purposes, absolutely. Take yeah. it or use it and modify it use the base of that adventure but modify it to what you're doing in your campaign like yeah. old vintage pre-written 
Absolutely, absolutely. That's awesome. actually so. That's a that's actually that's a big cool. thing. Uh, one of my friends, who actually one of the, one of the party members in in the in, in the players in one of my campaigns, actually has, has his first edition D and D book Ooh. that his like dad had. Does he it's bring it really out all the time? And he brought it to us and showed it. To, it. I mean, I hope we don't touch it that often because it would really <laughs> fuck it up. The oils in your fingers yeah. gonna yeah, ruin the page. You know, but you have to because it might go on sale. You know, it's, we're gonna see like the first DM books going on Christie's. Eventually, after oh, no, after there are Lucky Time Explosion it. popularizes they're, Dungeons and Dragons to the fine art world, massively on eBay. They're like they sell for yeah. a lot, but like I, I'm a big like I, as much as I like love modules and I love to support people who make modules, and I'm like totally down for that because that like really helps a lot of people, especially like because coming up with like a whole adventure, a whole world, a bunch of players, like you know, a whole call to adventure from scratch is very daunting and can be very intimidating, and it's not for everyone. And for me, I'm like a very you know hyper fixated ADHD, like gotta make everything from scratch, like you know obsessive, yeah. you know, anal retentive type of person, so I have to do it all from scratch. Uh, uh, yeah, it's like yeah, scanners, yeah, yeah, yeah. our heads are going to explode in two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> so, like, but, but there's definitely those modules there, and they're very, very helpful. Like, modules aren't, like, for me, like, for my, the games that I run with some of my friends, they don't always fit as well because uh, I can sometimes feel a little restrictive, but then it also goes through this, like, really beautiful kind of paradigm of philosophy of, um, like, trying to keep your players on the rails and trying to keep them on, on, on the tracks. Oh, on Lord, the I know about that struggle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like and so many people were like, hey, how do I keep my players focused? How do I keep them on the rails? How do I keep the story moving forward? How do I go to the next page and you're of like, the module? Put them a shot collar on and them. I Pay attention. am a bit of a chaos gremlin when it comes to that. And you're I a chaos gremlin? A chaos gremlin, as oh. you would more. So kind of like a dice goblin, distant cousin. But um they like and I'm like, no, dude, if your players go off the rails, make new fucking rails. Like mm. <laughs> just lean lean in. This goes back to something that you taught taught me what do you when mean? we were in when we were in a con artist collective oh, together. Yeah. yeah. And like and I was like, ah, I want to do this thing and I want to do this thing, but people keep thinking that I'm this other thing. Oh. And you said, dude, lean in. If they think oh. you're this other thing and like, you know, it's doing well and it helps you and you're happy with it, lean the fuck in. And I was like, yeah, that's it. And I mean, it's become a huge philosophy for with a lot of the things I do, even in life. Like, go with the, go with lean the flow. In. So you've been yeah. making off the top of your head. I mean, obviously a all the time. Question. Yeah. Prompt. Me. How Let's go. many adventures have you I mean I, I know they're all kind of interconnected Ooh, anyways um, yeah how do you quantify yeah, that's many? a good question like we have like uh, I mean as far as like anywhere like between four and eight hour sessions yeah um we have done. Oh, hundreds. you guys are going for less time than we used to go. Hundred, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have done, dude. The, the, we were young and we were able to do thirteen-hour sessions. <laughs> I, <miss it. laughs> I would always. I, you guys would be mad at me if I showed up like fifteen minutes late and I'd be like, "We're starting at like eleven a.m. and because, going till four so in the fucking no, morning." That's You're leaving out, out the fact. So that's, that's a big as, as a GM DM. That's a big no-no. Like if someone shows up, like what is the acceptable lateness time? Okay, yeah, so that's a good question. Two things. You, the, the reason why we got up never be late be, because I would call you an hour and a half before the game and you'd be like okay I'm up and then I would call you a half an hour later because it yeah. took you 45 minutes to get here and you say I'm up and sometimes you'd still be late or still go back to sleep yeah yeah okay so I, have this, I have this thing I have this magic power where I am my body like wants me to sleep and I used to do this as a child too my parents would try to get me up and I would wake up Look them in the eyes, like open my eyes and go, uh, I am awake. I'm getting dressed. I wasn't I'm also... ready. And then they would leave and I would fall back down. And the only reason I found out that I was doing that is because they came in and they were like, they were screaming at me in the morning. And I go, why do you guys yell at me every morning? Every goddamn morning I wake up, you're screaming at me to wake up. This is a horrible way to wake up. And they're like, Brandon, we've been in your room like five times and you tell us you're going to wake up. You get up and look at us. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like I was totally doing it in my sleep. So, so you probably talked to me in a sleep state a few times. That, that happens. Fugue states happen. Happen. Yeah. I mean, a lot of like, uh, um, uh, whether it be unfortunate, unfortunate or not, or, or like, you know, has nothing to do with it. But I think it's all still very beautiful is that there's a lot of neuro spicy, neurodivergent, you know, ADHD neuro spectrum spicy. people that are find themselves in the nerdy communities, especially in the TTRPG world. They find an escape. They find a way that they're welcome. They find like, you know, a very, very good community that it's like very supportive. And I, I, I think that I think that's beautiful. I think yeah. that's great. Um, one of the things I wasn't even in the GM at that time when oh, I was doing yeah. it. And I was still because because that's one of the things like uh, the GM puts an immense, an immense amount of work into this for you. They do yeah, so much work. Right. They're like, building the world, I have basically. Pictures, I have pictures <laughs> of, like, m maps, like, really, 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 in, like, it, uh, complex maps that I have made and put a ton of work Have you ever shown them in an art show? Um, the maps? No, they're, like, they're more like, like cartography maps. 
Right. Yeah. yeah but yeah, that yeah. would still be awesome. I mean, like you know, they're up on our Discord channel and they're up on our website and stuff like that. But like, this is this is for the players. We like, I print them out, I put them on uh, uh, right. in, in frames, and I hang them up. Like, um, we We're, have like artists that do our like character art, and oh, like nice. you know, and I understand like the struggle from yeah. Like, there's there's, there's to, a lot of struggle to try and get uh, paid for doing which creative is why work I, you love. I don't although like although D has got like kind of a a built in audience that are buying stuff already. So yeah. it's kind of nice to be able to just fill the shoes and become like the set maker or the figure maker. Now we've been talking a lot about D and D, sure, sure, but one go. thing we didn't do is define it really easy. So I'm going to challenge you because sure. I know you like to go in depth. Give me the simplest definition. Give like the four year old, like, you know, smooth brain people listening, going, what the hell are they talking about? Game masters, dungeon, Master. what is dungeons and dragons? And why is it creative? You want the question to be limited to Dungeons and Dragons or just TTRPGs, tabletop role playing games, and collective stories? Just Dungeons and Dragons. Just Dungeons and Let's Dragons? Keep it simple, yeah. Uh, canonical or? <laughs> no, like a simple explanation, like what the hell is it? How do you play it? Okay, basically, it is a, create, a, a way to kind of play a game, but mostly creative storytelling in which one person kind of sets the scene and the world. Uh, it's kind of like acting a little bit uh, with a bunch of friends and people who personify different characters or different personalities mm -hmm. or yeah, I have this other philosophy about your know, first character you make is always a version of yourself or how you want to view yourself. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. But um, and oh, and they also I, to relate that to art uh, they always say if you draw a portrait uh, you always paint yourself a little yeah, bit. Yeah it's a bit of a like it, it looks like you like the, like the bone structure Absolutely. ends up looking like you. Exactly. Yeah, and I think Same that's, thing in your character. that prevails like it permeates all art I think and, and especially mm -hmm. and then you start to like you know God, how self-centered and just how ugh, I think it's a human what's experience. Wrong with us? I think <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's less narcissistic and it's a human experience of trying to discover yeah. who we are. But anyway, D&D, &D, and then what you do is that you, you have a setting, you have something that's called a call to adventure. You can or cannot. I mean, the setting can be anything. It doesn't have to be fantasy. It could be sci-fi. It could be space. It could be whatever. What's the famous, what's the most famous uh, sci-fi one? Uh, the tabletop game? There's another one that's really big. Oh, yeah. well, like one of the alien ones? No, or? was it Cyberpunk? There's was a cyberpunk. Wasn't there a one? cyberpunk like uh, kind of like the game that came out with Keanu Reeves? But I, I thought that was like the biggest sci-fi one. There's an sci alien one. one. There's an alien one. Yeah. There's like Fallout one. I've seen there's a lot of people ones. adapt the D and D system specifically to different scenarios. Have you ever merged wait, worlds? Let me, wait. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. So, um, so D and D is then. And so what you do is that you you create some sort of uh, thing. The, the the GM is in charge of the world and how the world reacts to the players. But the players are pretty much the ones that the the GM is just very reactive. It does. Right. It just it, all they do are in charge of how the world reacts to what the players do and there's always some sort of problem or something maybe they discover it maybe you come up with it other thing and what you do is that you roll dice to simulate randomness so like hey i want to raise right. this person i want to like get information from this person about the problem that they're having with the sheep or whatever and they're like oh the well, sheep yeah i mean you just uh, make up shit and <laughs> i see what kind of campaigns you got all right all right, all right. So, I'm out of here. Don't, uh, don't roll for sodomy. But um, so, and so I'm like, okay, well, yeah, we'll go, like, uh, 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 and then they, they roll like whatever and everything. They add their bonuses because people build their characters just like right. you would in a video game. They have like bonuses. Everybody has like different stats. And like, you know, if they do really well, then, they, you know, they so succeed a, at what it is they wanted to do. And perhaps even more. If they don't, then, you know, funny, right. crazy, sad things might happen. It's what you want to do. And then it's left up to chance by the dice. Yeah, right. let me, let the, me the ask dice you, simulate randomness. As and they can DM, do some really crazy stuff. I'm sure you've wrote, you know, Know, written a lot of campaigns, adventures. Mm. Was there ever one that you were well, just we like... Well, we together write them, yeah. really, honestly. Together. What was one of one of, like moments where you're like, this is the coolest, this this right here. Oh my this God, there's is, so many. Uh, this is amazing. I just came up with this. They're going to be oh, so thrilled. Can, I, oh, can I say one from our moments? Let me, oh. let me, can I answer that kind of with uh, one sure, of my favorite yeah. moments? Uh, it was in Did our campaign this, together. No, TJ you, helped you write this because he's a part of it. Because he's a part of it. That's the thing. It's like nobody's one person is writing it. Right. The DM has control. It's the players story decide tells. what happens. It's like improving off each other all so the time. So one of the moments that got me hooked on D&D &D that made me want to keep playing it forever was our campaign, and I was a new player. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you were doing a rogue thing, and so you were checking for traps every fucking inch we went, right? You're I like, was an edge traps, lord. That was a traps. mistake. I checked for traps, and you were like really anal about covering all the traps, and my one of the things that got me excited was aggravating you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and so, like, my favorite thing to do would Wait, be, the like, player or my character? you you as the player, yeah, but with, I mean, sure, that would reflect in your character as well. Probably, like, the yeah, same for thing. that, it was one of my earlier characters. It was so, yeah, your earlier yeah, characters, was, but, uh, like, my I favorite moment learned was, a lot. <laughs> we go into, uh, we're going, and, like, it, I would just do dumb stuff, that because you were trying to be very careful, I would do dumb shit, yeah. uh, just upset you. I was trying to win, you. I was doing the wrong thing, I was trying to win, right. and that's not what it's about. So we walked into this, like, uh, cave, and there was a pool in this cave and we're all like checking the pool out 
And then I look at, and, and like, you know, he's <laughs> like, oh, I'm like looking at it from a distance. And I, I look at Nick and I was like, uh, I cannonball into the well, you know, in the and, secret well. And you were like, what the fuck are you doing? Lay oh gas. my God. <laughs> and, I was, yeah. and I was just like, the reaction out of you I got was like, this is fun. Yeah. I like this. <laughs> and then, I, you know what? I got rewarded with a you dwarven did. gold coins at the uh, bottom. Yeah. Gorf? 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 G O R F? Gorf? No, no germ, g dwarven gold oh, coins. Oh, dwarven. dwarven. Because I think there was an DW. Atari 800 game called Gorf. Oh, uh, it's Gorn. I think no Gorn's a VR title. Well, they I made it. it I think they Gorf. remade it. I think there's. But anyway, oh, could be wrong. A I think it's. I think it's a remake. Ooh, but like, cool. yeah. But you know what? That's really interesting because that's that is so necessary. When you have like a, a group of players, yeah. it's really important to have the himbo and like have the person that kind of doesn't just, always murder hobo. Please don't. Please don't do that. But like, I mean, like unless your party is about that or whatever. That's Wait, did you say but, please don't be a murder hobo or please don't yeah, murder? It's, it's, hobos. A, it's a type of like character that some people play. Like, they just go. They just go around and like kill NPCs and take their that's stuff an awesome and just be like, what are you gonna do about it? For those just yeah. listening at home, like uh, there's a sparkle in Morgan's eyes right now. Yeah. When about um, <laughs> that's an awesome name. Oh no, what have the I done? Murder hobo. <laughs> So, Dude, we're going home right now and starting rocking out. Oh, Please don't yeah. do that. We're gonna Please, I should not have said that. Please don't do that. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> you never know what's going to get Morgan's going. Sorry. That really gonna, we got to get him I, in a camera. If, if, if your party is full of a bunch of people yeah. that are super, super careful, you need someone that's just going to be like, oh, fuck it. You know what? Yeah, we, totally. we got Because you got to keep it moving. And that's like, it's super important. Like, I mean, Sean was like this Cronin barbarian that was just like, I want to whack. And yeah. he whacked. And he did really good whacking. And it was great. Please and, rephrase that. <laughs> 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 he swung his flesh sword. I mean, sword. He did, he did. But yeah, like when you talk about like those epiphanies, like, oh man, this is a beautiful twist. Oh, this is a great thing. Like, there's so many. It happens all the time. Like, probably twice a week. Like, I think of something and I'm like, oh, this is going to be really, really cool. But you don't, one of the things you always have to temper with that, just like you would with art, is that you don't always get the opportunity to capitalize on every idea that you come up with. Like right. sometimes the story doesn't go the direction that you want it to go yeah. and you don't get to get, do that big reveal. Yeah. Do you know sometimes sometimes, a, a sometimes the world's not ready for your butt paintings. You yeah. Know? I mean, you know, that's that's <laughs> you, short, <laughs> odd way to put it, but that works. Do you works. ever have a team with someone who was a, a chaotic character? Oh yeah, you have yeah, to. Everyone's like just showing up chaotic. looking to fuck shit you up. Have to. That's the thing. Like managing expectations, like reading the table, is the same thing as like reading your audience and being a right. curator and understanding like the, the the setting you're in. It's the same thing. Like how like how serious am I going to go with this campaign based on who's playing? I know these people's personalities. I know ah, the characters that they're playing. Like I see. You, yeah. so you do something. So all these things are taking into yeah, consideration. Yeah. So there's another philosophy to that, which right. is called catering to your players, not pandering to them. Which right. is like same thing with with artists and stuff. You like you cater to your audience. You don't pander. Or to your them. Yeah, because if you're catering, or, your patron, if yeah. you're, if or you're you catering. have an a, you have yeah. an actively aggressive like you know antagonizing say sort of your patron that seems to be popular in the art world yeah, too right now there's also a like, whole warlock oh, you want to you want to uh, buy my art you're a fucking idiot shut up and then they're like wow I need and that. Yeah. I need that now. Masochistic reverse psychology. Yeah, That's it's wonderful. weird. Yeah, <laughs> like it, there's there's so many like uh, parallels between them, but yeah, you know it happens all the time, and you also you just have to temper yourself, as, uh -huh. especially as a GM. Maybe at, as an artist, I should have brand. And every time I'll tell people like, if you buy a piece, see that guy over there, like yeah, he's gonna knock me out in front of you. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, you buy that piece. Oh, like an oh, interactive you buy it? He's going to come over and, he's and gonna knock punch me in the wig face. right off my skull. And you just beg them not to buy the piece? And no. Goes, Please don't. I don't want to get hit. No. No. That should entice them. Oh. So I get popped in the head. Oh. In this day and age, I think that's a great selling point. There's also a bunch of I players that are understand. like, I'm you in there for the combat. Work. What are you talking about? I'm going to hit you anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, they're also if, as long as you film it, then okay. we'll sell work. All right. Yeah. I mean, if it was just a slow motion video, you know, of you getting yeah. punched it's in like the, the face. The, there over are and players. Over vulgar display of power black and by white Pantera. has to be in black and white. There are players and characters that are like all in it for the combat. They love the combat. They like they're yeah. not really into the role play as much, and they just we want did the a combat. lot of uh, com. We did, did a we role play heavy game. We did. And so like, if you went to a like, battle, yeah. you physically went into a battle. Yeah, we has stand that, up and no, we wouldn't no, fight. No, you use dice. You it roll just, for initiative. Like the, game, the game changes a lot when you enter combat because then you enter like restrictions about moving your character like around, what you can turns, do. time that goes by, like if what you If you're in role do. play, you're like, I want to run up that mountain with my super speed. And they're like, okay, okay roll cool. the dice. Yeah. Did you make it or not? But if it's, you're, it's time thing. If you're in combat, it's like, I want to go that way. And they're like, okay, move your guy this way. Because every places. round is like six seconds. So like it's yeah. far more segmented. Where like, yeah, if you're in role play, you get a little bit more freedom to like, it would take forever. 
right? Yeah, it, 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 yeah. You it just could. you just you just don't yeah. enter initiative. What do you think the ratio? Combat time. What do you think the ratio of your dice of ages stuff is? Uh, role play to combat. I think we're. I'd like to. I think we're just a little bit more role play than we are combat. But I try to keep it pretty even. But yeah. I also like. I, I'm not. I actually don't make too much of an effort to try to uh, like uh, push towards a certain ratio. Uh -huh. I really want them to be like wherever the story goes. If combat's what's going to happen, then combat happens. If True. it makes sense for combat to happen, if it doesn't, if they like you know bypass the combat by doing something really crazy that they don't have to fight, then they don't have to fight. But right. I still have to prepare like six different maps just in case. That's wild. True. We yeah. got about a minute on the free show left, so we're going to be going in. We're going to talk, keep uh, talking to TK, uh, TJ on uh, on our. I was with TK Mills last night. I was judging his art battle. That's why like TK is in my head. We're going to keep talking to TJ before we go and we get into the secret Patreon only hour oh, long oh, edition. Oh, that's a plug, right? This is a plug. Yeah. So give me us a plug. Where can we find you? So uh, so we're Dice of Ages. You can find us at diceofages.com. We stream on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. You can find a lot of our stuff on YouTube. We have three campaigns: the Argent Flame, the Baker's Dozen. Uh, a lot of these people are here. Nice, <clears throat> nice. And uh, C3, which is the Crestfall and Cold Iron Co Coalition. They're all in the same homebrew world. We have a bunch of stuff. We have a Discord. We have an Etsy print shop. We, we print out a lot of stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, go Very check it out. Very nice. Yeah, check it out. Check out Dice of Ages. And stick around if you want for the rest of the episode on Patreon. Just $3. $3. No, Give us some money. dollars. Three shekels. Just a little bit. Less if you than listen a set to the show, we appreciate you. Mm. All right. Uh, thank you so much for joining. We'll see you next time. Bye.